All right, so today we have just a few upgrades for the 3DR Solo. Um, recently got a 3D printer, and so I've been having fun uh, printing out little upgrade parts and whatnot. So um, first, kind of like the the less uh, technical upgrade components. So one thing we have here is a uh, gimbal retainer. Basically allows you to, to, to snap this on the bottom of the gimbal with the GoPro so it doesn't wobble around while in travel. Um, the GoPro, the 3D R Solo does ship with a like a, a foam block that you can slide in, um, basically uh, within the gimbal underneath this point here. But it's it's actually pretty challenging to get it in and out. It, it slides in behind this little rail right here. Not the easiest thing to pull in and out. So found this uh, this model online, made some modifications so that this, this little uh, hole right here snaps into one of the clips in the gimbal. Works really, really well. I'll show that in a sec. Also have some 3D printed um, extension legs that fold down, so when it's in the case, uh, with these folded down, it fits just fine. But when you're about ready to, to, to go out and fly, you can pop these leg extensions down, which allows you to have a bit more clearance for the gimbal. Um, even with the extenders that 3DR, uh, 3DR ships, if you have like tall grass, it can still hit the gimbal. So this is ideal in that regard. Also have here a an, uh, one of these alpha directional antennas. I've uh, had heard really good things online about them basically allowing you to have better range uh, both for the solo itself and also video transmission quality so I'm going to try try those out as well GPS isolation uh, isolation shield that I printed out um, basically it allows for better separation um, from the body of the solo to the GPS unit um, if you guys have been following the solo you know there's been a, a mod out there called the cardboard mod where basically you take a piece of cardboard and stick it in between the GPS module that the solo ships with and the solo body itself, and supposedly it helps with um, the signal, like signal loss is, is, is eliminated basically with using the GPS mod. So this is just more of a, a bit more of a clean looking um, solution for that. Um, in addition, I do have the new uh, GPS shield provided by 3DR that's also supposed to help reception and, and uh, dropouts, things of that nature. And then taking a step further, I actually ordered one of these new um, MRO GPS U-blocks, uh, U-block modules. So basically, this is uh, an upgraded GPS um, made by M Robotics, and the reviews on this have been stellar so far. Like basically, getting almost double the satellite count just by using this guy here. So before jumping into the installation of this guy, um, I will show a quick video, just basically of what we're looking at with the, the current GPS situation. Um, basically, what we're looking at is when I turn it on, it takes about a minute to get GPS lock, um, and I'm sitting at about nine satellites. Now that nine satellites is both uh, outside, just right in my backyard, and then also I actually get the same um, indoors, maybe hopping to you know eight or seven, but still, it still picks up satellites inside, which is surprising. So, um, but that being said, I, I have had times, depending on the location in the past, where there have been some some weird uh, occurrences where I had a hard time getting GPS locked. So, uh, we're gonna sell this this module and see what we what we can do upgrade wise. <laughs> Another upgrade that doesn't really mean anything, but it was neat. These little uh, these little rubber nubs for the, the control sticks that on the transmitter. Um, they actually do feel really good and actually and help you kind of maintain finger position on the on the uh, radio here. So, you know, pretty basic, but I thought they were neat, so I thought I'd show those. But basically, here we have um, before we jump into the install of the GPS unit. Basically, I want to show kind of how this how this uh, gimbal lock works. Um, we have these two little little holes uh, where the accessory bay, you know, uh, components go next to the the gimbal. And basically, it's it's really simple. Uh, th there's two little nubs on the top of the block. You just insert these in those in those two holes, like so. And then you just clip the, the solo right in. And then once it's installed, like it's nice and stable, it can shake around. It holds it tight. So when it's in the hard case or backpack, it's not going to wobble around on you. So, pretty straightforward there. And then here we have the extension legs. So, all right. So let's go ahead and get to the actual uh, install here of the new GPS um, isolation plate, shield, and GPS module. 
So first thing I'm going to do is just slide the top of the battery off the Solo. And I got my registration info there. <laughs> and then I'm just going to use one of these plastic pry tools. Um, basically you go uh, directly underneath. There's a little, little slot where you just pop it and give it a little twist. You can use a small screwdriver if you choose to do so, but I like using these because it doesn't uh, damage any plastic. All right, so with that pried up, I'm just going to basically pull up on these two sides, up and out. And it just should pop straight up. There it goes. All right, next we're going to go ahead and take out a few screws. Um, doesn't matter what order, but it looks like we have one, two, three, just three at first. Okay. And the last two over here. All right, so with all those out, now we just gotta make sure to basically pull this plate out. Um, just verify you don't, you know, mangle the, the power connectors here. All right, and with those out, we can flip around the battery tray. We can see where the GPS connection is. So it's it's one connector, really straightforward. We're just going to use again our little pry tool and pop it out. Just be careful you don't you know don't pull by the wires. We don't want to dislodge any of these any of these connections. So we're going to pull it out by the actual uh, retainer clip here. All right, so now we're just going to basically uh, use a clip off that. There is like a little a little uh, lip on this that you can pull in. Um, you can push in basically to to release this clip. So we're we'll going to do that real quick. Pops off real easy. And now with that, we'll go ahead and move the solo out of the way. Because everything else we're doing is on the actual top battery container here. So as just as before, so what we have here is we have like the stock, the stock uh, GPS shield. It's this uh, film right here. It's got some adhesive and then two screws. So we're gonna go ahead and pop those two out. Don't wanna lose those. Go ahead and pop the rest of this clip off. Same thing before, there's a little, little pin you just push down on that and rock it out gently. All right, so now we're just gonna basically peel off the existing shield. Again, there's a little bit of adhesive. Just go slow. So there we have the actual GPS module. Um, now, I was I was a very early solo owner, so basically um, I have a Rev-A GPS, which hasn't been great for a lot of people performance-wise. Again, for me, it hasn't been too bad. Uh, I haven't had horrible GPS lock issues, so no complaints there, but I have had issues on occasion. So again, you can see right here, GPS Rev A. So we're gonna go ahead and swap it out for this guy. And you can see just comparison wise, uh, yeah, the connector's the same right here. It's just a secondary connector um, for if you were if you were to use like, I'm guessing the Pickhawks too, uh, but we're not gonna use that. We're just gonna tie in the existing one that was already there. Let's go ahead and pull the GPS off. Again, we have two more screws here, so we'll do that real quick. And there it is. So again, that's the old GPS module. There's the new one. There we go. So, let's go and get this guy installed. Now before we do that though, we're gonna put the isolation plate in the bottom here. Okay, so, that being said, let's get that done. So this GPS isolation plate, it, it's, it, the install is really simple. It's just got these little, uh, these little feet that basically slide um, along the PCB here. And it pops in and it has, you know, has room for the connectors there. And then you use the same, you use the exact same screws as we did before. So 
there's really no difference as to how the actual uh, unit gets installed. And then we put the uh, you know the new 3D the new GPS shield over the top of this. So let's go ahead and just drop this in. Again, we only have there's three there's uh there's three screw holes here, but we only we only had two to actually tie the GPS down. All right, so we're just going to take uh, take two of the screws and pop the GPS back on. Now note the the isolation shield. There's actually not any um, like it doesn't screw in to the actual board. It's just it just latches onto the GPS and the GPS threads in. All right, and now we'll go ahead and take the new GPS shield and install it right here. All right, and one thing before we install this that they recommend we do is basically there's these seams um, on the shield. They recommend kind of creasing or bending those before you pull the actual uh, adhesive backing so it's easier to do. And just before we're going to line it up with the uh, the GPS module here, and there's this, this cutout is essentially if I can get that piece to fold out, perfect, is where this uh, you know the existing cable will pop through, and then we just like before we have our two screw holes to secure this down in addition to the adhesive, and it also this guy's kind of a little bit wiggly right here, so this will also help keep him from bouncing around. So go ahead and push that up and we'll line this guy up. Lining up the screw holes. All right, that looks great. So new shield, new isolations plate. New GPS. All right, so with that isolation plate, these screws don't actually reach. So, so yeah, the screws that were holding the old the old plate down don't reach because the isolation plate adds not you know extra like eighth of an inch, you know, a few millimeters of thickness. But honestly, I mean, this thing's not going anywhere. It's like just with the adhesive alone, it's 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 not going anywhere. So I'm not worried about that at all. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and take the GPS cable. We will plug this guy back in. And then we'll bring our solo back into the picture. And we'll do the same here. We're gonna take this clip. Put it right back in there. And then just before we're gonna insert this back in again, taking care with the, the battery connectors. So you're gonna kind of go to an angle and slide these connectors in through this opening here. Hmm. All right, so one thing I'm noticing here, this uh, so the GPS cover right here, the shield is actually hitting the top of this battery connector nut and making it so it's hard for you to push down. So I'm actually going to cut. I'm going to cut this corner um, on the GPS connector so that it has a bit more flex room. There we go. That seems like it should work better now. So let's give that a shot. Yeah, perfect. Now it doesn't pop up on the sides. So, hmm. Take note, 3DR. The GPS shield needs to be modified a little bit to to seat properly. So now that's all down inside, I'm gonna fast forward this and install install the screws back in.
All right, so all the screws are back in, and they're nice and secure. New GPS, GPS isolation plate, GPS shield. Slide the battery back on. Oh, slide this back. Slide the plate on first, and it's just basically you just these little uh, grooves right here. You can see you just slide it forward and it pops right in. So we're just gonna slide it forward, apply some pressure down, and forward, pop, and that pops right on. Slide the battery in. All right, and we're done. So now let's go fire it up and see what kind of difference we get GPS-wise. Just to do a quick test with the new GPS installed. Pull off the GPS guard. Out on the solo. Windy day out here in Utah. And we'll see what she does. All right, I'm gonna fast forward this initial connection phase here. It always takes a, about a minute to get the whole Wi-Fi thing synced up. All right, and it's connected. And so, let's see what we get. I let it sit for another minute, and now I'm at 15 satellites. So essentially, the longer this thing sits under the sky, the more satellites it picks up. And I'm almost, I'm almost doubled my satellite count from before. So that's, that's outstanding. That's great to see. And we'll go inside to the garage, and then the inside of the house and see if it's any different. Even inside the garage, I'm sitting at uh, 15 satellites. <laughs> so that's, that's pretty awesome. And now let's uh, go inside the house. So inside the house, it's bouncing between like, eh, you know, nine to, nine to 12 satellites, um, which isn't bad. I, my G, it is showing the red GPS symbol, meaning that it's not fully connected. Like it's, but you know, in a house, I don't really care about having GPS lock. If I was to fly in a house for some sort of like, you know, to show the in, interior, I'd be doing it manual anyways. So it's not a big deal. It's, it's still getting 12 satellites indoors, which is impressive. So overall, this is a great upgrade. So takeaways, um, I was hoping to get out and actually fly around a little bit and see, you know, if it maintained that, that extra satellite coverage. I'm sure it will, but unfortunately it's a very windy winter day here in Utah and I just didn't want to go outside and fly right now. So I'll say that for another day. But just for my initial tests, both in my backyard, in my garage, and in my house, I was almost doubling my satellite count. So um, initial impressions are awesome. I mean, this this is a great upgrade. Um, really gives gives the solo uh, some extra uh, usability in those, especially in those areas that have like really dense coverage, whether it be buildings or or trees where you had a hard time getting GPS lock before. I think this is going to punch through and do a lot better. So very happy to see that. And I will report back at some point when I actually get out and get some flight time with the new GPS. But until then, uh, thanks for watching. And just as, as always, if you have any questions, throw them in the comments below. Happy to help out. Thanks, guys.